Tonight, Yahoo to buy Flurry. Facebook launches Save. And Microsoft gets flack from politicians over their massive layoffs. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 133 for Monday, July 21st, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you'll finally have all your financial life in one place and get a clear view of everything you own. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Jason Howell. Let's get right to the tech feed. In a deal confirmed by Recode, Yahoo is buying Flurry, the mobile analytics and ad platform company. Yahoo's behind the curve on mobile and has been working to strengthen its revenue in this area. Flurry gathers mobile analytics from over 50,000 apps tracking over a billion devices. The company also recently launched a video ad solution for app publishers. In the last year, the San Francisco startup has beefed up their leadership team and secured over $70 million in funding. Bloomberg has stated the deal is valued at over $300 million. And in an interview, Scott Burke, Yahoo's senior vice president of advertising technology, said, quote, it ties right into Yahoo and mobile first and all of the investments we're making into mobile today. Flurry is the next logical step to extend our reach. Facebook is saving you from leaving their service in order to read that article or view that video that was linked from your news feed. The new feature called Save hits iOS, Android, and its web client today, and it allows users to store links from throughout the Facebook experience for viewing at a later time. Users can stash those links away, though the pages themselves aren't cached, like is the case with similar standalone services like Pocket and Instant Instapaper. Users can look for the save button or bookmark icon associated with stories in the newsfeed. Facebook pages uh, for places, movies, TV show, music musicians, and events. You can find them all there. And clicking that button will save the associated link to the user's saved section in the navigation links on the side. Saved items are only visible to the user. And a quick note that Facebook's acquisition of virtual reality company Oculus for $2 billion dollars is a done deal. Announced back in March, the acquisition received the green light by the FCC and later the California Department of Corporations Fairness Committee. Virtual reality fans can either rejoice or get all grumpy now that Facebook owns one of technology's leading VR efforts. At the recent Hackers on Planet Earth conference, forensic scientist Jonathan Zadarsky detailed a number of backdoor security methods he says are included by Apple secretly in iOS. These undocumented services with names like Lockdown D, Paste D, and Mobile File Relay, they bypass encryption, granting access to data via USB, Wi-Fi, and possibly even cellular. Zadarsky asks why Apple is opening up the iPhone to covert data access through intentional backdoors such as these, but Zadarsky doesn't feel like this is necessarily a security emergency. Quote, my paranoia level is tweaked, but not going crazy. My hope is that Apple will correct the problem. I want these services off my phone, end quote. Zadarsky also advises those concerned should use a complex iOS passcode and set mobile device management restrictions as well as utilize pair locking, though doing that might block third-party forensic software, but it won't do anything to protect the data on the device if analyzed by Apple itself. Verizon announced today it is upgrading all existing Fios customers to symmetrical speeds. That means if you have a 15 megabit per second downstream and 5 megabit per second upstream, both will now be 15 megabit, megabit per second. Uh, the upgrade applies to all existing and new subscribers. Verizon is also adding a new entry level tier of 25 down, 25 up. The packages before the change, <laughs> get ready for this, a bunch of numbers here, 15, uh, 15, 5, 50, 25, 75, 35, 150, 65, 365 and 500, 100 in all of these tiers, that second lower upstream number will now be increased to match the higher downstream speed. Pretty cool. According to Verizon, these upgrades will continue throughout the fall. The company expects current loads to double by the end of 2016 with more customers uploading videos, engaging in video chats, using cloud services and sharing files. Google Fiber and several other small ISPs do offer symmetrical service up to one gigabit per second.
Now, coming up, what do you do with 10,000 old pay phones? The city that plans to turn them into Wi-Fi hotspots. And next, I'll talk with Alex Wilhelm from TechCrunch about the political hot water uh, that Microsoft faces after announcing all of those layoffs. Uh, but today, I want to share with you a free and secure tool. It's called Personal Capital, and that solves two barriers to growing your wealth. The first barrier is that it's hard to keep track of things like stocks, 401k, bank accounts, all that stuff, all on different sites with different usernames and passwords. The second is that you pay someone to manage it, and you're probably paying too much. Uh, Personal Capital brings all your accounts and assets on one single screen on your computer, phone, or tablet with real-time and intuitive graphs. This week, Personal Capital announced the integration of its award-winning app with Android Wear, available for download in Google Play. The Watch app seamlessly integrates with Personal Capital on other Android devices and provides users with relevant and timely updates on their finances whenever and wherever they need it. It shows how much you're overpaying in fees and how to reduce those fees. You also get tailored advice on optimizing your investment. So why wait? Signing up takes just a minute and it'll pay big dividends. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better investment decisions right away. So here's what you can do. To set up your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. And Personal Capital is free and the smart way to grow your money. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, I want to welcome to the show uh, Alex Wilhelm, tech reporter at TechRedge. Good to have you back, sir. It's good to be back. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Let's uh, talk a little bit about Microsoft. They've uh, had some news over the weekend. Uh, late last week, the company announced significant layoffs, of course, totaling around 18,000 job cuts, with the majority of those cuts coming from the recently acquired Nokia division. Wall Street yep. appears to be pretty satisfied, I would say, with the move, but there's been some political friction. Um, what about the move is folks like Senator Jeff Sessions so concerned, Alex? Well, he's mad about Microsoft kind of pushing for more H-1B high school visas. And he says, look, if they want to hire more people that are not from the U.S., bring them into the U.S. under these high school visas, why are they laying off so many employees? He's kind of conflating an international company trying to lay off part of its international workforce as opposed to a company trying to lay off people in the U.S. But, I mean, there are some U.S. layoffs as part of the 18,000, so he has something of a point. I think that politicians never like it when people try to cut jobs inside their own jurisdictions. I mean, that's just kind of a standard political plot. So Right. Now, Microsoft obviously is, a, you know, it's a company. It's a, <laughs> so yes, they, they have their out. bottom well, line they, to look forward to. Uh, how much of a responsibility do you think a company as large as Microsoft has uh, in paying attention to the social effects of these layoffs uh, in, in these large numbers in light of what's, in their mind, just good for business? Right. Well, I think for a lot of companies that aren't very cash rich, they don't have as high of a moral incentive here. But I mean, if you have right. $60 billion in cash, whatever Microsoft has, I think you should make, you know, full appropriation for your employees you're laying off. I mean, this is not a good global economy, and these are very large cuts that are coming more or less because Microsoft bought the assets in question. Sure. So I think it's, it's only fair for them to deploy quite a lot of capital to take this strain or at least partially off these workers that are now going to be unemployed for the large part. And the company has said it'll take a, between a $1.1 or $1.6 billion charge, but that's not all for competition costs. So it could be a lot less than that for the employees themselves and spread out over 18000 So it may not be enough. Um, but like you said, they are a business and their first, you know, responsibilities to their shareholders, not their now former employees. And so there's kind of a tension there and you have to tease it out yourself. But I think that they should definitely take care of these people. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I would agree with that. Now, uh, shifting gears a little bit this morning, Microsoft announced that it's going to merge some of its conferences together into a single event. It refers to as a quote, and this is pretty awesome. You pointed out so yourself, good. inaugural unified Microsoft commercial technology conference. It's mm. as if they named their conference, one of their versions of, uh, you know, windows, uh, very yeah. catchy. Why did Microsoft feel compelled to do this? You know, I think it was just time. They had a lot of these individual conferences, which were useful, but very siloed. To so only get people that know SharePoint over there, and only people that use Exchange over here. I think they wanted more mixing. You know, they're trying to tie their products together better, both on a consumer and an enterprise sense. And this is probably just part of that overall plan. Um, you know, they had a lot of events. And to be totally honest, I even got them confused and I watched the company pretty carefully. So I think it's going to be better for their overall IT enterprise push to have this kind of under one domain. Sure. Is there any indication as to the scale of the new event? Can people expect the same breadth of content uh, that they're used to in all of those individual conferences? Or can we just kind of assume that it's going to get trimmed down and maybe focused a little bit more? No, I think it's going to be bigger and broader. Okay. I mean, I think they're bringing them all under the same roof, not to eliminate the actual content themselves, but to make it bigger and just more cohesive. So I think you'd see kind of a similar scale of all of them accreted together in kind of one big bucket. 
because right now they're trying really hard to core developers. You know, they're, they're desperate to keep developing Mindshare where they have it and to kind of build more where they don't. And so to see them diminish their developer outreach efforts would just be, you know, nonsensical. So right. my guess would be this would be a pretty big compound. And uh, speaking of developers, of course, any word on Microsoft's um, really popular build conference? Is that going to stay separate? Yeah, I talked to the company about this, and there should be no change on that front. So if you like build, um, it will be there, and uh, you know I'll be there as always, so say hi. Right on. Uh, Alex Wilhelm, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you, sir. Uh, where can people follow your work online? Uh, I write for techcrunch.com, and I'm on Twitter, just at Alex. Excellent. Find him. That's easy to remember, at <laughs> Alex. All right, take care, sir. Thank you. All right, and finally, what do you do with 10,000 payphones in New York City? The plan is to turn them into free Wi-Fi hotspots. In 2012, the city launched a test program converting 10 payphone kiosks in three boroughs. New York is now accepting bids, and it could award the contract to the likes of Google, Cisco, IBM, Motorola, Cablevision, Time Warner, Verizon, or Samsung. Several of these companies already run or are building Wi-Fi systems in the city. It's a great idea. We wish them luck. I want to see that here. Although, when do I ever see uh, payphone booths? You don't see those anymore. Still, great idea. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2. You can also write us at tn2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today. It's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Jason Howell. Thank you so much for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.